Good morning and welcome to the worship of God here at our virtual gathering of Danville Congregational Church. We are so glad that you're able to join us here this morning. First, we'd like to wish a happy Mother's Day to any moms in our midst, grandmothers, moms-to-be. We are so glad that you're able to be here with us today. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. We're a people of extravagant welcome. No matter what you look like, talk like, sing like, move like, dress like, vote like, or love like, you are welcome here. And indeed, we are glad that you're here with us today. If you're new to our community, we invite you to say hi in the chat box and to introduce yourself if you feel comfortable and share whatever information that you would like us to have about you. And a member of our community will welcome you to worship this morning. We have a couple announcements we'd like to share with you to start. As always, you're invited to follow along uh, with our worship by going to danvillechurch.org slash bulletins and downloading the bulletin for our worship this morning. If you have a joy or concern that comes up for you in the middle of the week that you would like to that you would like us to pray for on Sunday morning, you're invited to submit those to me ahead of time at ericadanvillechurch.org. Later in the service, we'll have our time of prayer where you're invited to submit your joy or concern in the chat box for all to see and we will uh, lift that joy or concern up during that time. Our youth group will not be gathering tonight. They gathered on Friday night. Today we celebrate our graduates among us and today we get to celebrate two of those graduates, Danny Bray and Finn Featherstone Hoff. We are so excited to celebrate them today and to uh, lift their presence and affirm them here among us. Uh, the stewardship packets went out on Thursday afternoon, and today we will be hearing from Amy Ferber Dobson, our first speaker uh, for this year's stewardship campaign, on what inspires her to give to the, to the ministry and the work of Danville Congregational Church. And so we look forward to hearing from Amy late, a little later in the service. If you did not get your packet uh, by Tuesday of uh, this coming week, uh, reach out to the church office and uh, you can come by the church and, and pick a packet up. But all packets were mailed uh, to everyone on our roster. Uh, Pastor Todd has an announcement about our summer youth intern. So yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, speaking of graduates, uh, we have one of our former graduates who is joining us this summer as our youth intern, Hugh Clausen, who graduated a few years back, is back in town, has a lot of wisdom and energy to lend to our youth program. And we are super excited that he is going to be working uh, with the uh, youth commissioner, Jen O'Neill, our advisors, and me to provide additional support for our young people and additional uh, support uh, to our youth group gathering. So everybody join me in welcoming back Hugh Clausen. We're super excited about this. Thanks, Pastor Todd. We're very excited to welcome Hugh back. And just a quick reminder that um, if you are a commissioner or a chair of a committee or board, uh, we do need your report for the annual report no later than May 15th. You can submit those to office at danvillechurch.org. Beloved friends, today is the day that our God has made. It is a good day indeed. And so let us rejoice and be glad in it and join together in our call to worship. Please join with us in the call to worship. We gather this day to acknowledge a threshold moment. A thin place between what's been and what's to be. Between what's been studied, learned, and accomplished. And all the more there is to study and learn and do. So it is very good to mark growth in celebration. And then so very good as well to celebrate having further to grow. To note a mile marker on the longer way. And to take joy both in the distance traveled and the distance yet ahead. Bless this liminal time and space and those who stand in thresholds, looking back and looking ahead. 
May it be with a sense of both gratitude and anticipation. May it be with an awareness of how we grow our lifelong with our whole person. Our minds, bodies, spirits, and emotions. And may it be with a profound sense of what it means to place our way, where we've been and where we're going, within the way of the holy. Amen, Amen. and Amen. Ashe. Peace be with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another with waves and smiles and pass the peace of Christ in the chat feature.
As he graduates high school, I'm so proud of the man Danny has become and so grateful to the people of DCC for helping him on this journey. He's grown from that chubby little kid who used to run around at vacation Bible camp and godly play into a strong young man with a loud voice and a really determined sense of what he wants in life. He's kind, he's motivated, he's very hardworking, and he, above all, loves to laugh and never takes himself too seriously. Danny's got two goals in life. He wants to play professional rugby and he wants to work at Lawrence Livermore National Labs researching plasma physics. And in both areas, he's done the work to make those things happen. He goes to the gym, he's taken all the AP and college courses he can, and he's been very excited to be admitted to the College of Creative Studies at UC Santa Barbara, which offers him the opportunity to study graduate level physics as an undergraduate. But more importantly, Danny is a kind, hardworking young man who has God in his life and wonderful people around him, and I'm so proud. Van Feathersen Hall. So when your mom and I were putting this show out together about the things we admire and kind of marvel about you, it occurred to us that a lot of the ways you now show up in the world as a young man has a lot to do with how you were formed and nurtured by the youth group at DCC. We remember dropping you off years ago to carry in the nursery when you were an infant. We've seen you go on these mission trips you know, to Mexico and to Santa Cruz. I went with you on that one uh, for beach cleanup and uh, Blue Theology, where you met Izzy uh, in Monterey. Um, and then the hundreds of youth group meetings that you've had over the years with all of your peers and your sister and, you know, Steve-O and Sid and now Jen and, and, and Hugh. I hear is joined, and of course, Pastor Todd and Eric. What we came to see is that the church has really shown you what true community is. And with the congregation as our witness, we just wanted to share how incredibly grateful we are that, that the church has basically helped raise you with us. So Finn, um, you have this remarkable gift for seeing who people really are underneath the their you know their external exterior, both the attractive bits and the ones that aren't so attractive. We see that you respond to people the way they intend to be, and that is amazing. I think around DCC, it's called God's grace, and we see that you've been given that in spades, and now we see you. Um, giving it out in spades. And we find that just amazing. Um, we also admire your ability to uh, balance work, service, and play um, in a way that where you stay sustainable. We see that you've resisted the pull to overachieve, which is not easy to do uh, around these parts. You've um, honed what I call the art of the minimum, the ability to, uh, to just do what's needed to meet your bar so that you can then pursue the play and passions um, of all, your, all the people in your communities with them and, and for them. And we saw this really for reals come to life when you stepped up and were ultimately selected to be drum major in the marching band. And you did it not because it would look good on a college resume, but you did it because you looked around this tail end of the ninth grade, beginning of the 10th grade, like a multi-month selection process, where you looked around and said, like, who's gonna lead this community I love? And I, you said, I, I think it needs to be me because you want it to be done in a particular way. And then you became drum major and then the pandemic hit um, and music was largely stripped and we watch you reorganize the entire program with, you know, with the leaders, the, the teachers there and, and administrators so that it would stay safely intact the entire year, uh, right when 
these, you know, your peers, and it's, it's, it's a bit like Land of Mitzvah toys in a way, right when they kind of needed you most. And we watched you kick into high gear through all of that. It was a sight to behold. So Finn, we're super excited that you're headed to NYU to form new music communities and your music production program. But mostly we're proud of who you've become. So Godspeed to you, Finn. Hey, Danny and Finn, as you move on to what's next in your life, we, as the kids of DCC, just want to say thank you. Yeah, thanks for all the times you hung out with us, for the times you watched us while our parents had meetings, played games with us at Camp Kaz, and all the times you just played basketball with us after church. You never made us feel like little kids and you showed up what kind of leaders we want to head into uh, we want as we want to head into the youth group. And some of your godly play teachers just wanted to say some memories. Like for me, Finn, when you were in class, you never said a word. But then one day when you were older, I was sitting next to you in a meeting and you were saying such wonderful observations and such uh, profound things that I had to call your mother afterwards, which you didn't know, and tell her how impressed and proud I was of you. And then Danny, I remember way back when in kindergarten, when we were making doves for um, Pentecost, you got that scissor and you cut it just right on the line. I've never seen anyone so young in kindergarten cut it so perfectly and again I went to your mom and I had to tell her how impressed I was because you know being a teacher you see things like that so remember Danny and Finn before they were even born well I remember when Susan told me that she was ready to have another child I already knew Mari and sure enough about eight or nine months later out comes Danny and then I remember Alan Kelchner was our minister when Finn was born, and that was a special part of, of the morning service. So that was 18 years ago. But I know that I've been a part of Danny and Finn's life, growing life is involved with uh, vacation Bible camp when they were campers, and then as they got older as leaders. And, um, but also our families would get together to put together the AIDS Easter baskets always gathering at somebody's house and dying Easter eggs together. And best of all was having Danny and Finn help to cut and squeeze pomegranates because those guys are a whole lot stronger than I am. And I was also a part of Danny's uh, Eagle ceremony, which was held at our church. And so I'm very happy that they have been a part of my life and vice versa. I'm sure they're gonna do great with wherever they go next. Good job, guys. Congratulations. So Danny and Lisa? Finn, this is for you. I Wish You More by Amy Krauss Rosenthal and Tom Lickenheld. I Wish You More Ups Than Downs. I wish you more give than take. I wish you more tippy toes than deep. I wish you more we than me. I wish you more hugs than uggs. I wish you more woohoo than whoa. I wish you more will than hill. I wish you more can than not. I wish you more snowflakes than tongue. 
wish you more pause than fast forward. I wish you more umbrella than rain. I wish you more bubbles than bath. I wish you more treasures than pockets. I wish you more stories than stars. I wish all of this for you because you are everything I could wish for. And more. Congratulations, Danny and Finn. I miss you a whole lot. Finn and Danny, we are all going to miss you here at the youth group. Both of you were so positive when you came to youth group and you were very energetic to come and you made everyone's day brighter and we are all going to miss you very, very much. Thank you so much for being a part of the youth group and showing me how it's done. Hi, I'm here today to tell you a little bit about Danny Bray. Uh, Danny couldn't be here today. He is in Disneyland celebrating his 18th birthday, so I'm sure he is having a great time. Uh, but I wanted to share how I discovered a different Danny after I went to his Eagle Scout promotion. Uh, I watched as several folks came up, spoke about Danny's accomplishments, uh, and this started to show me a whole other side of Danny that I never knew. At youth group, Danny always wanted to play games. If the games included running at top speed, climbing trees, dodging balls, wrestling, then it was the best night ever. And if you could include all those things into one game, then it was an epic night for him. Uh, but Danny does have a secret side. At his Eagle Scout promotion, I noticed that he had 33 merit badges. Uh, he had completed a number of service projects to include engineering a special type of shoe rack for the marching band, which was able to hold 77 pairs of shoes. Now on top of that, he was able to maintain a 4.2 GPA, which is amazing work. Uh, and to give you an example of his commitment, I had the opportunity to go hiking with Danny a number of times, and each time he would be wearing a backpack. I finally asked him, what's in your backpack? And he explained to me that he always loaded it up with about 50 pounds of weight. Uh, without more weight, the workout just wasn't fun for him. Uh, so it turns out Danny is a rugby superstar and everything he does is centered around his sport. He still says his favorite job will be working in a warehouse so that he can move heavy boxes from one end of the building to the other, even though I suspect he's gonna become a physicist after he graduates. Uh, Danny is an amazing person. Um, a 4.2 GPA, a star rugby player, an exuberant, fun-loving, down-to-earth person. I am proud to call you my friend. You need to come back over to dog sit for us though. Mia does miss you. Good luck at UCSB. I have no doubt you will amaze them there as you amazed us here. Best of luck, my friend. So I want to say a, a few words uh, after Steve about Danny. Um, I didn't have a ton of time to get to know him, um, but getting to know Danny through confirmation class, through youth group, uh, found that Danny was someone of very high principles, uh, sincere commitment, and uh, was really passionate uh, about life and the things that gave his life meaning. Uh, as we started to figure out how to emerge uh, from the pandemic last fall, when we had a bit of a break, um, we went on a hike and Danny joined us for that hike. And yes, he had a backpack full of 50 pounds uh, and out hiked all of us, I might add. Uh, and what I observed about that um, was uh, Danny loved sharing his knowledge. He listened to others. He had a really high engagement on the issues and the things that we talked about as well as just joking around and having a good time and he was fully present to uh, everyone to adults and to the other young people alike I'm really glad that we got that final hike and Danny I know uh, without a doubt uh, that you will accomplish and achieve everything that you uh, set your sights to I wish you the very best so I first became aware of Finn I found out I would be meeting with the search committee 
back in 2018, and that, that search committee contained uh, one young person. Uh, and I thought, wow, that's really cool. The church is inviting a young person to help evaluate the person that would be their youth pastor. And it turns out, yeah, it's Finn. Um, I would later get to know Finn as he uh, made it, uh, I think, a goal of his to make sure that I found a welcome once Miguel and I came to the church, once I started joining youth group and showed up as this slightly eccentric, a little goofy, and uh, uh, some big ideas. Uh, and Finn was there, uh, participated, welcomed, and uh, on occasion gave me some uh, well-earned uh, advice. Uh, and I'm grateful for that and for how Finn helped me find my place in this youth group. Uh, like I said, Danny, I regret that I didn't have a, a whole lot of time with Finn. Uh, the last couple of years uh, that I've been here, his last two years of high school. Uh, but I want to share a couple of things, uh, recollections of Finn, that have been really profound to me. So back in February of 2020, it was the last Sunday uh, of our Four Sundays of Black History, Black Futures Month. It was Youth Sunday, and we needed someone uh, to give a word. And Finn Without any arm twisting, Finn was like, yeah, I'll do it. Um, and the text, as you may remember, was transfiguration, uh, particularly the text in Matthew that dealt with Peter wanting to build tents for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Now, let me tell you something about Transfiguration Sunday. This is a, this is a particular text that pastors, um, some of us, dread. Uh, because of its complexity. And if it hadn't been for Finn, I think you would have seen Pastor Eric and me perhaps arm wrestle for it. But we didn't have to. Uh, Finn took it and we didn't really, uh, we didn't really spend a lot of time talking about the text. We had spent several weeks in youth group talking about race and racism and, and why perhaps it was important to talk about it. But uh, I didn't coach Finn at all uh, on the message that he would give. And sure enough, uh, Finn showed an aptitude and a mastery of that sacred text, um, goodness, that I, I only hope uh, to have the next time it comes around for me to preach it. And as he finished his sermon, this is what he said. Well, wait, uh, I want you to hear it in his own words. So not only did Finn uh, step up to the pulpit, but Finn challenged our church and Finn uh, spoke to us as a prophet because what we've seen in the past 18 months is we've seen our church start to come out of that tent in so many ways and so many different issues of justice, which brings me to really a, 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 another profound experience with Finn and uh, that would be uh, on the march on Palm Sunday, the march for justice for Tyrell Wilson. And Finn and some of our other young people and 20 or so other folks from Danville Church showed up to be among the group of people marching for justice. And uh, Finn came out of that tent. Uh, there's many ways to do that. This is one way that, that Finn showed up and 
Here's the thing about justice issues. It's great to show up, it's great to lend our voices, it's great to carry a sign. But what Finn modeled that day was, hey, I'm, I'm here, what can I do? How can I help? And he ended up pulling the wagon that carried the speaker for the women of color's voices to be amplified as they led the march. And he didn't make a big deal about it. In fact, I don't think he said anything about it, not at least to me. Um, but he made himself of service in a very important way. Uh, no attention to himself. He showed up and he did what needed to be done. And I, um, I think that's the thing that Finn has modeled uh, for the youth group in his time uh, here growing up in this church and particularly in these last few years as a, as a leader of the youth group speaking last year on behalf of the youth group for the seniors graduating. And now here he is. And Finn, I just want you to know how super grateful I am for the influence that you have been on the other young people, on us, <laughs> on us, members of this church, members of your family, uh, for the resolve that you show, your compassion, your great sense of humor, the way that you hold space and listen, uh, listen to others, um, no matter what their age, no matter what it is that they've got to talk about, you listen, you're present. And uh, I know, like I, like I said with Danny, I know you're gonna do great in whatever you do. And uh, I'm so thankful for uh, how you've shown up in this church and how uh, we will remember uh, the example that you showed to us. God bless you uh, as you go on from this place. Danny and Finn, as your pastor, I am deeply proud of both of you. You have left quite an impression on this community. You have a special place at the heart of this community. And so it is right for this community to celebrate and affirm each of you this morning. When I think of you, a few superlatives come to mind, smart and talented, gentle and kind, compassionate and caring. You have been raised by this church. You have been nurtured and formed within this community. And so I want you to remember this. Wherever you go, wherever you find yourself in this big world, you have a place among this community. And I have been incredibly touched by both of you. You are both special young men. So a little later, we are going to offer you a blessing, but I want to offer you this. May, may you go forth in life transformed by the renewing of the mind and heart. May you be not only healthy, but mindful, not just strong, but open-minded, not simply intelligent, but wise. May you not be youthful in look, but in essence. And may you go forth wherever you go, embodying the love, the peace, and the justice of God. Amen. May it be so. Wow, thank you guys. That's so amazing. I, uh, I'm overwhelmed and um, I really do feel like I've learned how to love and how to care and how to be in the world through this church. I, I've been going to the church since I was in diapers. Um, when I joined in the youth group in sixth grade, uh, people like Hugh and all these other high schoolers when I was just this tiny little pudgy guy uh, they ate dinner with me and they played games and they, they treated me like their friend and their equal. Um, and that is a very special and rare thing to find um, as a youth in, in high school and, and in all these communities I've been a part of. It's really nothing quite as welcoming as the youth group and the church as a whole. Um, so, you know, you younger youth and parents who have kids in the youth group, um, 
be super grateful. I'm totally going to miss you guys so much. Um, and thank you for those kind words. So our scripture reading for today will be John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As God has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide my love, just as I have kept God's commandments and abide in God's love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from God. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that God will give you whatever you ask God in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. Thanks, Finn. So we find ourselves again celebrating our graduates virtually. Um, and at least one thing in that amount of time has changed. Finn, you and I, our hair this year looks a lot better than last year's COVID hair, right? <laughs> and thanks be to God, I have any hair left at all after this year. Um, so, um, so again, this year, I have prepared uh, a few remarks for our graduates, Danny and Finn, and I hope that uh, all the rest of us can find uh, some usefulness in these words, regardless of where we find ourselves on life's journey. So here we go. Pro tips for graduates and everyone else to 2021 edition. <clears throat> now, y'all know that most of the time I'm a big fan of the lectionary. Uh, I love how it always seems to give us just the right text at just the moment that we need it. And this year is no exception. This section that uh, Finn read a part of, the very words of Jesus, those are some, these are some of my most favorite texts in all of the canon, not just because of the words that Jesus says, but also when he said them. You see, the words that Finn read for us just then and, and, and the, the words that just preceded about the vine and the branches, those are a part of this 125-ish verse section that begins right after Jesus washed the disciples' feet, when he had that last meal with his friends, when he dipped his hand in the bowl and called out Judas, who was about to betray him. That includes his prediction of Peter's denial. That included Jesus speaking truths and love and praying fervently for his disciples, for all disciples to come. Jesus prayed for us in these few hours before Judas would show up with a mob to unjustly arrest him. And so that, that is the context that these words come to us. Can you imagine the depth of love that Jesus must have had to say these things, to be in that room one last time with the people he loved most, thinking about us? And so it is that Jesus utters these precious words. This is the context for Jesus telling us about the connectedness, about Jesus' connected 
connectedness with us through the metaphor of the vine and the branches and how our fruits glory, glorify God. And then this beautiful text, and this is from where I will draw three pro tips for you, Finn and Danny and anyone else listening. Pro tip number one that we can glean from this text, hang out in Jesus' love. Hang out in Jesus' love. Jesus said, as God has loved me, I love you. Hang out there in that love. Okay, that's the Pastor T paraphrase. As I have loved God, as God has loved me, I love you. Hang out in God's love. That's the place to be. And then he goes on to say, and if you keep my commandments, then you are abiding with me. Well, there's that word commandments. It makes it sound conditional, but I'm here to tell you that that abiding presence is not at all conditional. Now, it's Graduate Sunday, so it would be right and good to sling a few commandments at you. Um, we could throw out the big 10 commandments. Um, we could throw out the commandment, uh, don't text and drive ever. Okay, that one's really important. Uh, always answer the phone when your mother calls. Always. There's another useful one. But, you know, Jesus, Jesus was a master teacher, a rabbi. He knew that law inside and out and knew that there were tons and tons of commandments and rules to follow and keep and that it gave the impression that perhaps God's love was conditional. But Jesus came, he said, to fulfill the law and said all of those rules and all of those commandments could be summed up into, and you know what they are, Love God with everything you got and love your neighbor to the extent that you love yourself. That's it. That's abiding in God's love. That's what it's all about. Love God, love yourself, and love others. And when we do that, that's abiding in God's love. That's what's hanging out in Jesus love. That's how you do it. And, and let me be clear here. Jesus' abiding presence is unconditionally reciprocal. Say that again. Jesus' presence is unconditionally reciprocal. Because here's the thing. Jesus loved his friends, and he knew that they were going to let him down. He knew that they were going to miss the mark. And you know what? It's the same with us. And as you go forward down the best trails of your life, your mountain bike's going to hit a bump and you're going to fly off and maybe you're going to hurt yourself, might even hurt some others. You're going to be in the throes of life's big game and you're going to fumble the ball. But know this, this faith walk that you're on, this journey you're on is a journey through un conditional love. And I know that you know this, Danny. I know that you know this. You wrote about it in your faith statement when you finished confirmation class with Pastor Eric and me. Uh, I asked Danny if I could share his faith statement with you, and he gave me permission. Danny wrote, God is real. God manifests himself every day. God loves all people, no matter what. Jesus happened to show me a path through life. God gives strength to my body. God gives strength to my heart. God gives strength to my will. God gives strength to my mind. And so I say to you, hang out there. Pro tip number two, bask in God's joy over you and cultivate joy. The next thing Jesus says in this text is that he finds joy in you, Finn. He finds joy in you, Danny. 
Hazel and Oliver and to our other young people and teenagers listening to listening right now, God finds joy in you and to everyone in this Zoom. God delights in you. God created you to experience joy. Yes, there will be difficult days ahead, moments of sadness or loneliness or grief. In fact, there's some mamas in this Zoom right now who are holding both joy at the accomplishments that their children uh, have reached, but also some sadness about what's happening. Each of us, you, Finn, you, Danny, are a unique reflection of God's image. And know that when you experience sadness or grief, that God feels that sadness, God feels that grief alongside you. And also, when you rejoice, when you experience joy, as you celebrate this accomplishment, when you get the best news of your life, when you fall in love, when you take stock of all the love that is around you, God is with you in that joy to experiencing it fully with you. That's how our joy is complete. And when we abide in God's love, that's when we experience the capacity of joy. And our joy becomes complete. So pro tip number one, hang out in Jesus' love. Pro tip number two, bask in God's joy over you and cultivate all of the joy that you were designed to experience. And pro tip number three, you heard it in the opening hymn this morning, in the text this morning, you have a friend in Jesus so let's think for a moment about our best friend, about a really good friend, about that friend we can call in the middle of the night, about that friend we text who texts us right back when something's going on, that friend we laugh in the floor with, the, the friend that cries with us, the friend that knows our deepest, darkest secrets. Think about that friend. Aren't they such a blessing? One of the most precious sayings to me in all of the sacred text is when Jesus says he chose us and that he calls us friend. See, this, this faith journey isn't some hierarchical, vertical, one-way relationship where we worship God like puppets on a string. No, Jesus said, I chose you. I continue to choose you, no matter what you do, no matter if you betray me, deny me, or don't call me back, I continue to choose you again and again and will call you friend. So hold on to that and hold on to this as well, because those of us who are friends of Jesus are your friend too. That's the beauty of this Christian community. We call each other friend. We're here for you. And I think in his faith statement, Finn understood that as well. And he also gave me permission to share his with you today. Finn wrote, I believe God plays a part in everyone's lives. Everyone has their own way of loving God and each other. God appears in unexpected ways. I believe God is present in the face of others. I experience God in the social community that is created by church. God makes me feel valued through the church. And that's what you've got, Finn. You've got God, Jesus as your friend, Danny. You've got this church as your friend and know that we are here for you, that we are rooting for you. We're going to take care of your folks and your moms, especially um, because that's the beauty of Jesus abiding presence of Jesus calling us friend. So in summary, we've got three pro tips this year, hang out in Jesus love, bask in the fact that God delights in you cultivate joy 
you know that you have a friend in Jesus. You have friends in this church who are going to be praying for you, who care for you deeply, who wish you the very best. And, you know, who knows when you'll show back up in this church, right, Hugh? <laughs> and know that we wish you the very best, that every member of Danville Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, is proud of you, is grateful for you, and is grateful to you both. So go in peace and love and joy. Amen. So this would be the point in the service. If we were in person, we would have Danny and Finn come forward and we would all extend our hands toward them, but we got to do it on Zoom. So um, Finn and Danny in spirit, uh, we're going to virtually invite you forward um, so that we can recognize you among us and send you with God's blessing and our love as you begin your journey beyond high school. For everyone that's on this Zoom call right now, I'd invite you, if you're comfortable, to turn on your video. And while you're doing that, I invite our graduates just to take a moment to scroll through the pages of the gallery and to see your church family, all those who love you, who are praying for you, who are here to support you. Now I invite everyone gathered to extend a hand toward the screen in a manner of blessing over our high school graduates. Danny and Finn, before you were even formed, God knew you. At your birth, God's breath filled you with life. Today, we celebrate what you have become at this moment in time. And so we pray, God of our beginnings, we thank you for the gifts of these graduates, their excitement, their awesome wonder and curiosity, their open speech and encouraging words, their contributions that have blessed us and challenged us. And we have become a richer and more diverse community because of them. As they move forward into the world that awaits, comfort their fears with the full knowledge of your abiding presence. Strengthen their resolve to follow in the footsteps of Jesus as modern day disciples in a world that needs their spirit and their love. Guide them as they move through life, protecting them from any pitfalls and anything that would seek to do harm. Help their hands to be the hands that work for justice and mercy. We ask this blessing upon each of them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
We come now to our time of prayer where we are invited to lift up the joys and concerns of this community. If you have a joy or concern this morning that you would like us to name and lift up to God, uh, please submit those in the chat box. After each one is read, you are invited to respond with here our prayer. To begin this morning, I want to acknowledge that in, in addition to the celebration of our graduates, we had another celebration this past week. We celebrated the 50 year membership anniversary of Ken and Joyce Bomer. We visited with Ken and Joyce uh, this week and we presented certificates uh, to them, uh, acknowledging their commitment and their presence and their dedication to the Danville Congregational Church community for 50 years. Ken and Joyce joined the church in 1971 and have been faithful members ever since. And so here are some pictures from that gathering uh, last week on Wednesday. Bruce and Kathy Hickson offer prayers for former DCC member Barbara Reed's challenging surgical procedure for cancer, and they report that it was a success last week in Denver. She and Scott thank all at DCC for their prayers and support during this bumpy road. God, in your healing and peace, hear our prayer. Barb DeBarger offers prayers for Judy Gestring's father, Keith, who has been put into hospice at the Yontville Veterans Home due to congestive heart failure. Pray that his passing comes peacefully and that Judy knows she has been a good daughter to him. God, in your mercy and peace, hear our prayer. Christina Kelchner offers prayers for Karen Taylor, Finn and Hannah's grandmother in Vancouver, Canada, who just finished chemotherapy. God, in your healing and mercy, hear our prayer. Wendy Pfeiffer offers prayers for their son or her son, Daniel, who has a surgery this Friday. May his recovery be fast and may he be able to keep up with his schoolwork and be encouraged as he moves forward. God, in your mercy and peace, hear our prayer. Beloved friends, join me now in a spirit of prayer. Gracious God, on this day of celebration, a day where we celebrate our graduates and affirm their presence and gifts among us, we also acknowledge the importance of parents, and particularly mothers, motherhood among us. And we give you thanks that you are a loving parent to us all, O oh God. From your being, all life was born, and in your bosom, all cre creation is nurtured. You have formed us in your image as your children and gathered us together as a brood under your wing. You have united us as kindred members of one human family, and we are grateful to be your children together. We celebrate your divine love, O oh God, reflected in the human expressions of motherhood. We give you thanks for the moms among us and ask that you strengthen them in their daily tasks. Grant them wisdom in the lessons they teach, patience in the discipline they foster, and persistence in their promotion of compassion and kindness, both by word and action. May they be given the honor and thanks they deserve, but often do not receive. God, we thank you for all the motherly figures in our lives. Grandmothers, aunts, sisters, wives, stepmothers, foster mothers, guardians, babysitters, teachers, healthcare providers, neighbors, friends, loved ones, and many others who practice self-sacrifice and embody compassion to all who are privileged to be in their influence. 
grant them vigor to carry on their work and the satisfaction that the holy privilege of their task affords. God, we acknowledge to you that even amid our grateful celebration, many of us come with restless spirits, reluctant to name the difficulties of this day. For some, this day brings the sorrowful awareness of their own inability to conceive children. Draw your tender spirit near their feelings of self-betrayal and impotence and grief and remind them that those who struggle with infertility have always shared a special place in your heart, O oh God. We pray for those who have suffered miscarriages, those fatigued by fertility treatments and those struggling through the process of adoption. May they remember that in your power and through your church, they can still have a lasting legacy beyond themselves. For some, oh God, this day is marked by loneliness and grief. As they spend this Mother's Day as a widower, an orphan, or a parent who has lost a child. To those who today live in the wake of the death of a loved one, grant glimpses of the resurrection. Bring to them a steady restoration of their broken hearts. Allow them to live into their future and hope and empower them to carry out the legacy of lessons instilled within them. For some, this is a day that surfaces ongoing tensions that exist within our personal relationships and family dynamics. And so we ask for healing from the wounds of our past, a path of forgiveness for wrongs, both experienced and committed and the rebuilding of trust forged in honesty, authenticity and love. God, we give you thanks for the wide spectrum of motherhood represented among us today. New mothers and young mother, mothers whose children are in their most tender years. Mothers of grown children who transition into empty nests and a new chapter of self-discovery. Mothers and grandmothers of advanced years whose twilight of life is marked by frailty of body but a potency of spirit. Theirs is a cumulative reminder that though our lives are marked by transition and change, your nurture and your affection for all your children remains the same. Therefore, O oh God, remind us to live with a childlike faith, curious to every wondrous mystery, attentive to your every instruction and willing to share that love with every one of your children. We give you thanks, O God, in the name of Jesus, our sibling and teacher who taught us to pray. Our loving God who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time we are going to invite our first stewardship speaker to share a little with us about why she gives to the work and ministry of Danville Congregational Church. And so I'm going to find Amy. There she is. Ask her to unmute herself and take the mic. Good morning. Last March, as we were flung into a space that many of us had no idea what was happening and where we were going, as I'm sure I'm not alone, I was filled with a lot of fear and sadness and grief over not being able to be around all of the people that I love. And I was so concerned about it that I started making masks every day, all the time. 
And it was like one way that I felt like I could work to protect people around me. And one of the things that stood out to me over the really short week or so of the pandemic beginning was that there was a consistency that came with Sunday morning. Over this last year, every Sunday morning at 9.30, we had consistency, we had connection, and we had community. And for me, I had no idea that those were things that were so important until this all happened. I loved being able to show up every morning, every Sunday morning and have music by John and Gabrielle and sermons by Eric and Pastor Todd and visits by puppets that made us laugh even when we were crying half the time. Um, but it was an opportunity for all of us, I think, and especially for me to remain connected to people outside of Castor Valley at 19488 Vaughn Avenue. And it was an opportunity for me to go to church with my mom in Sebastopol and my mother-in-law in Texas and my friends in Las Vegas and meet a mother-in-law in Maine. And there were so many opportunities to connect with people across lots of places that I started to feel the connection come back. As much as we had been ripped apart, it felt like, while not being able to see each other face to face, for me, the opportunity that Zoom brought to this church is really remarkable and I'm so incredibly grateful. Over the course of this last year, there were so many opportunities for connection for my family with youth group, uh, both big and little youth group as Hazel calls it, and uh, Halloween, get together at a park and uh, a really amazing, Santa Elf who delivered pizza to our front door for Zach. And it's the little things, honestly, that make a really big difference in a family and in a community. And I'm incredibly grateful for all of the little things that have happened this year through our church. I am also really grateful that there were plenty of opportunities for me. At the very beginning, the weekly meetings that we had on Wednesdays, I think they were, I don't even hardly remember now. Um, and then later turning into the anti-racism book club discussions and more opportunities for us to connect. In some ways, I feel like I even got to connect with more of you in a deeper way this year than I had before. So for me, DCC brings community and connection and that lovely consistency that comes with every Sunday morning. So this is why I give to DCC. It gives a lot to me. You give a lot to me and to my family. I bet there are lots of reasons why you give too. Thanks DCC. Thank you, Amy. I'll invite Aileen to invite us into our time of giving. It is one thing to memorize the words of Jesus, but it is another thing to let those words transform us and rearrange our priorities and our lives. In these moments for quiet and reflection, what is it that God is inviting you to rearrange about your priorities? What is it that you want to offer to the church and to the world as a practice of God's love? You can give online by going to danvillechurch.org and clicking the donate button in the right-hand corner of your screen.
Please pray with me. God, this morning, as we celebrate our graduates and our mothers, we celebrate you, our loving parent. We give back a portion of what you have abundantly given to us. Amen.
Beloved friends, receive this benediction. Wherever you find yourself on life's journey, hang out in Jesus' love. Know that God delights in you and cultivate joy. And above all, know that Jesus is your friend. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace that by trusting in God, you may overflow with hope and love and joy. The power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. That concludes our worship for this sixth Sunday of Easter, Graduate Sunday, Mother's Day. We are so glad that, that you were able to join us here today. In a moment, we are going to transition to our breakout rooms for those that would like to hang out with us a little longer for a time of coffee, conversation, and community. If not, we hope to see you here, same time, same place next week. Have a wonderful week, folks. And in a